super easy. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, it says it's recording. You know, that, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I was kind of wondering how that was going to work if you were going to use a PC or what, but. Yeah, luckily, they made it simple for us. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, you're, you're a YouTuber. You know how often technology and stuff that messes up for no reason. Oh, I know. And that's. I know how it goes, too. Is when stuff doesn't work when you want it to. Dude, that happened to me yesterday. I was about to shoot. Uh... Uh, that video response to and my computer updated and it, it messed up the webcam driver it was like three hours to fix <laughs> like <laughs> the fun of it what? that's the same with a lot of the stuff as i film with my uh my um my phone so then i upload it to google photos and then i try and download the videos from freaking google photos and they always get to like one gig and then all of a sudden it just messes up and then it's oh, like redown yeah. and stuff. And then one night, I had a hell of a time one night with her trying to get stuff going. Yeah, dude, I've done the same thing. Like, uh, cause I, for some reason, when you plug a phone into a computer, it can't easily transfer. So right. I've had to do the same thing of like, how do I get this from my phone to the computer? I, I upload it unlisted on YouTube, then I download it. There you go. Take, it takes forever, but you know. <laughs> hey, whatever works, right? Yeah, although I ran into an issue last time where I, it was too big to download. So that was a whole nother hassle. Yeah. But anyway, how's it going? We've been out. Uh, it's going one is about as good as it can at 3 a.m. Right. And we're, we're, we're both night crew guys. so yeah. yeah, night crew for at least two weeks, and then I'll be back on days for two weeks. Yeah, guys, got to be difficult, like, uh, going back and forth between day and night. Yeah. Usually, uh... Switching over the nights takes a lot of caffeine. Yeah. yeah I, I, my fridge has a ton of energy drinks in it. Yeah. <laughs> stockpiling. Right. I also, I also work out. So a lot of times I have pre-workout that I just have that's packed full of like caffeine and hydrous or something like that. So it's just take a scoop of that and it usually helps me stay awake a little bit better. Yeah. You, you had that in the video, right? The uh, powder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, that's so no, man. I, you know what? I, for that video and stuff, I, I could handle it, but after about halfway through that tube, man, I don't know. They had some <laughs> kind of cayenne pepper extract or something in there, so yeah. it normally you can mix it, but the G Fuel I found out doesn't mix very well. So I just a lot of times I'll just take the scoop, yeah, scoop man. quick and then drink and like chase it down almost like alcohol or something. Let's get and it done with. If, if you breathe in too much. That cayenne pepper just goes like straight up your nose from the inside, and you're just sitting there like, yeah, snorting because it's just, uh. Hey, it can make it part of a challenge, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, I already got a couple of things in mind for coming up, so. Yeah, I didn't even have it planned, but speaking of the uh, pepper, how did you start doing those videos? Well, you know. So, uh, well. I we'd get bored at work, you know, and we'd uh, sometimes yeah. you know late at night, especially right now when we'd be there. So I work in an ethanol uh, producing place, and when we'd have our downtime, because a lot of times we're doing samples and stuff to try yeah. and make sure what we're making is good, we just kind of sit around and watch YouTube. Well, a lot of our favorite ones we want, like I've talked about them before, is LA Beast, um, even Good Mythical Morning and stuff like that, and they were doing yeah. uh, a lot of their videos with the great views would have them doing like spicy challenges and stuff like that and i don't know what it was the one night uh we were laughing so hard and i ordered a bunch of different kinds of candies and stuff like that to try it out and then my buddy also another bit channel i like to watch is hot ones so my buddy ordered a bunch of hot sauces from that was featured on that show so then we were trying all these different yeah, we were trying all these different hot... I mean, you guys have seen me do the bomb and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, and he did not like that one at all. So he actually gave me that bottle. So that's my personal bottle. Um, but yeah, it just... It kind of... It first started off as just something funny to do. And then uh, it, it got a good response. And people enjoy watching the videos. So I was like, well, let's see how much we can kick this up a notch before it becomes too bad. Yeah, yeah, they're entertaining, undeniably. But sometimes I, I'll tune into your stream, and you're in this immense physical pain. Sometimes I feel bad for you. I'm like, oh, he has consumed a lot of stuff. Well, a lot of hot pepper. 
Now, now, was it Nona? Was it Kamikaze or was it War Train or somebody? It was in one of the streams, and they're like, "Eat something hot!" Ha! Huh? Like, okay. <laughs> I think I saw that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm I was like, just like, I grabbed grabbed those Carolina Reaper nerds or whatever next to me and just chugged a bunch. And yeah, I regretted that a little bit later. Now but, the video yeah. was all they all entertaining. Undeniably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How far will Iowa retro game will go? Dad go. Oh, yeah, geez. Yeah. The next one's going to be pretty rough, so I don't know if you've ever heard of the Satan Toe or the Toe of Satan. No, it's, I, uh, it's, it sounds hot, though. <laughs> like it it's, a, hot. it's a sucker. Um, I don't know the exact extract, and I'll have to look into it. But, like, the bomb, the Scoville on that, I think it's like 180000 Now, according to the box in this thing, it's supposed to be 9 to $10 million. So, <laughs> um <laughs> The challenge itself with just a sucker is you put it in your mouth for a few seconds. I think they have that till a minute. You make it a minute or something, they have special... You know how they always have those levels, coward stuff, like when you do those carnival things and the hammer thing yeah, and it tells yeah. a week and stuff like that. Well, they got those, and if you can make it a couple, certain minutes or something like that. But if you've watched videos of people doing it, they don't last very long, so... I don't know what game I'm going to do yet or how exactly we're going to do that, but sooner or later, that one's going to be pretty rough with that. Hopefully it's not the last game I saw you play. Those puzzles were annoying looking. You were having trouble on that one. That one was, I didn't really do anything hot that night, but. Thank God, you you might not be alive. (laughs) I know. And that one was just, I I was getting to the point too, where I was starting to use my phone to kind of get little hints on how to beat it. Because I'm just like. But of course, it doesn't help, and it's six in the morning, and you've been up all night, and then you're just kind of staring at the computer, like, and <laughs> just mush up there. Yeah, I wanted to offer you advice, but I'm like, I have no clue how to solve this puzzle. <laughs> I wish yeah, I could help. And you know, and the bad part about streaming sometimes is, uh, you know, I'm seeing it now, but a lot of times people are seeing it about 15 to 20 seconds later. So yeah. then they'll throw out their hints and they'll try to talk to me. And uh, it's like, by then I'm either past the part or I'm raging. Yeah, that, that, that delay. Yep. Yeah. Now, I like your streams. Though. I always find them like, because there's not like a bunch of people. You know, like a big stream, it's like the comment section is moving so fast. The others are so chill. It's only a few guys that's late at night. That's what I like about them. Yeah, usually I... I... I tried to stream before um, prime time and stuff like that, which works out good. I mean, it, some of my friends like Chill Scissors and stuff like that, they can stop in. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it's it's usually the night owls and stuff that'll get on at night that see me, and then um, people will pop in then later. I, I would like to stream more during the day and stuff, but uh, my number one goal is usually my family, so a lot of times right. it's hard spend time with my family and sit down like i don't know how some of those guys can stream for six seven hours at a time during the day and it's like well you know what's your family like like and stuff yeah. like that to each their own you yeah, well, even with just like doing youtube alone it's like family then you got to go to work for at least eight hours and then you got to sleep and you it's like how do you properly right. balance it all you know it's not enough time left in the day it's and recently, that's been kind of the issue with uh, putting out videos. So I, what I found is a lot of times, like when I'm on days, it's kind of hard for me to do um, any kind of YouTubing or anything like that. So I, what I will do is when I'm on nights, I will spend like one night and I'll just record a bunch of stuff. And then the next night, next night, I'll just go ahead and I'll go through and I'll just edit um, and try and make a couple of videos or anything out of what out of the or whatever that i make you know um and then once i have that i will try to upload them to youtube and then i'll just kind of slowly release them every couple days because it would be a lot of times where i would be on nights and i would you know do three three yeah. videos or something like that and then people would get up the next morning and well i will retro gamer dad just drop three videos all at once and then it's like you know it's kind of a little too much kind of throw out there so I found this is kind of becoming more of a happy medium. Um, my wife uh, is very uh, understanding of the the channel and everything like that, and so you know, and I and I respect her enough that I'm not gonna just focus too much on this. Like, I mean, I do spend a lot of time on my phone with my Instagram account, and 
you know, watching videos and stuff like that. But I try not to let it consume, you know, especially when I'm yeah. around the family. Like, if I get alone time and stuff like that, she said, you know, do whatever you want. But, yeah, if it's my two-year-old running around or something like that, I should be focusing more on the kids than the interweb. I think we've all fallen down. At least I know I have, uh, because Instagram is so useful for YouTube. I've fallen down that hole. It's like, geez, how long have I just been browsing Instagram? (laughs) I gotta gotta get out of here. Oh, I know that completely. I will venture down, and then I'll just be like, uh, posts from a couple of days before that, and I'm just like, oh, geez, where the heck, is-? you know, just fall down that <laughs> yeah. rabbit hole. Suddenly, a half hour has gone by. <laughs> right. I think with YouTube, though, especially, it's so easy to like, and it, some people fall in that hole where you could put an endless amount of time into it and just keep seeing it grow and keep making videos. So you got to have like that discipline to like, okay, I got to spend time with family and stuff. Because YouTube, like, it can get so fun, and you just want to keep putting stuff out, you know. Yeah. But it's just, like, finding that bounce in life. Yeah. And, but like, like what you're saying with that, too, and it can be so fun, and then you want to keep putting stuff out and putting stuff out. And some, you know, the more stuff you put out and the faster, you might not be putting enough quality into it. it might just, yeah. I mean, a lot of people say, you know, quality over quantity. If you, I, could, I could do that. I could, you know, put out all these videos. 10 times a day, but people might start getting sick of them and less likely to watch you then. Yeah, that's kind of the boat I'm in now. Uh, I've got some big videos I'm writing, but, you know, and I'm just, uh, but it's just taking a long time. But I'm trying to, like, probably upload, like, uh, thinking once every two weeks or something, try to scale it back, you know, one, yeah. like two or three times a month, I'm thinking, for me. But, uh, yeah, for you, it's like, in your videos, I think, uh, they all maintain good quality because, like you said, like you could be making a pickups video probably every day, but then it's better with your videos. It always feels like there's a reason behind them. They're not just spammed out. They're not just vlogs. You put editing in. There's always a reason, and every video is a little different. It, originally, too, uh, my videos weren't as yeah edited and stuff like that because I I one I didn't have a PC. Um, so I was using my phone for everything, for filming, right. record, you know, editing and everything. And it was kind of hard to do. So when I found an app like KindMaster and stuff like that, it was nice to have some kind of that because I was getting kind of sick of, uh, you know, just filming and then straight uploading, filming, straight yeah. uploading and not putting because I see all my friends doing these videos and everybody and they have these great editing jobs that have, you know, music and stuff like that. And I'd be so jealous. I'm like, well, how can I do that? And then it, it did. It kind of progressed from just putting stuff out to put stuff out to actually making it, you know, like would I enjoy watching this if it was someone else that right. put it out? You know? And a lot of times that's becoming a big thing now, too, is when I'm filming, recording and editing, I will, after I'm done and I think I'm done, I will sit there and I'll go through. And I know it's kind of hard to watch yourself because then you just like, oh, yeah, you, know. you have but, to keep uh, rewatching yourself. I, I know how that goes. Yeah, and I, I never got that when actors and stuff like that would talk about, well, I don't, you know, what do you think of the movie? I said, I don't know, I didn't see it. And I can I can understand that now. I was like, yeah. what do you yeah. think of your video? I was like, oh, no, I didn't really watch it. So, and there was a time, one time when I had a video that I released that was like two minutes of black. Oh, I middle. remember that. Yeah, I noticed and that. I didn't know like... about it. And I've had a couple people point me out and I was like, oh, crap. And then I went back and looked at it and yeah. I said, oh, yeah. So I I made it, yeah, I kind of watch the video after I'm done and stuff like that. And I try to sit there and look at it and be like, if, you know, if someone, re- I didn't know it would release this, would I actually sit here and watch, you know, a good portion of it? Or would I would just, yeah, go no, on. I, I, it's funny for people who don't make videos, but yeah, like when you're finally done, you're relieved. It's like, thank God it's done. You're like praying, like, please, let's hope the editing software didn't mess up. But then, yeah, oh, yeah. It, you, you sit down to watch the video. It's like, well, I've already seen this video like 20 times cut up because I had to keep rewatching posts. Yes. It's like at that point, you're kind of sick of it. But I and I've noticed that, too, that I will go through sometimes and I've caught myself a few times doing it um, where I will try to feature a shout out in a video or I will. Even I, I caught it one time right before I almost released it, but I was editing something and I, I totally just kind of 
uh, started talking too fast, started getting kind yeah, of mumbling yeah. and stuff like that. And you couldn't understand a dang thing I said. And I was like, then I just kind of thought myself and I said, okay, make sure I edit that out and kind of did try something to try and catch yeah. my attention when I was editing. Well, I didn't catch it and I released it. Now uh, you just see me at one point, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it just doesn't make sense. And I was take that out. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like being able to speak clearly on camera can be a challenge. Like sometimes you'll want to say a sentence, but it's like a tongue twister kind of like, right. and it's like, it's like, all right, damn it. And there's some videos. Sometimes it's the opposite. You'll sit down to do a video and it just goes super smooth. That's always when it's nice. Yeah, because, uh, well, I just did that recent video for Chill Scissors about uh, well, how I started collecting. Well, that was yeah. that was 5.30 in the morning, just sit down, put a tripod up in front of me, and I sat on my couch, and I just talked for a good 10 minutes. And, you know, it was no thinking about anything. And, it, you know, I think it was because it came more, uh, I'm more passionate about it. It actually came from the heart more, um, that it was easier to do instead of, you know, okay, I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick Sonic 2. Okay. Now I need to talk about everything about it. Um, what should I talk about? And then it, it feels more artificial. It doesn't feel so, right. um, and that's what I kind of like about, uh, channels like war train and stuff like that, where, you know, he sets up his camera, he sits there and he can talk and, and he, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but he can talk and talk and talk and it's just, yeah, you know, it comes right off and it's, and it's entertaining and it's fun to watch. It's a, it's a talent to be able to do that. Like, I always try to write my stuff, but then that takes forever. <laughs> uh, I, there was a couple videos. There was one I did on uh, say on the Sega Genesis game, uh, Acme All-Star Tunes, and another one that I did on the thing on uh, Xbox. And I kind of tried to do that. I tried to write a script, but my timing was never right, where I'd yeah. write down a hole. And then, so I, I talk very fast. And I'd get through my script, and I'd still have about four or five minutes of the video left. So then I'd just kind of start doing that, pulling stuff out of my butt, and just talking yeah. about random things. And then it just kind of, I don't know if I'm kind of that kind of talker or not, or if I'm just that bad at writing a script. Because I get kind of anxious and get nervous, especially if I've been having too much caffeine. And then, blah, 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 blah. And then you can't even understand me on the, the over-talking or... I don't remember how they describe that when you're talking over the video footage. Yeah. What's yeah. over? Well, well, one thing I found, and whenever I do like a live action thing, like my Xbox show, and it's scripted, I find that the script is like it's uh, every time I like do the next section of the script, it always changes. Like I'm always improvising or making changes to sentences. So, like, it's almost like the script is more of a guideline I found right. for live action stuff. Well, I and I watched the one Cinemasker, you know, Angry Video Game Nerd, where he kind of talks about how he makes his videos. Yeah, I and, love that episode. Yep, and he had one where he had that, I think he was talking about having that big white board in the background, which just, yeah. it kind of had that guideline there. And, I, and I've thought about doing that, too, because, sure, I can be as prepared as I want, but once, you know, the camera comes on, you might lock up, and then you might, uh, uh, and then end up talking about stuff you didn't even want to talk about and then when you're done with it you're like why did i yeah, do that i was yeah. going to talk about this other stuff yeah that's always the worst like when you go back to watch a video it's like ah oh, i completely missed this whole section i wanted to talk about right you know okay i got some questions written down though okay and i don't we we'll probably won't be able to get through them all but uh i'm pulling them up on my phone uh they already talked about some of them all right, speaking of YouTube, actually, I want to talk to you about this. Um, one thing I've noticed on your channel is that you're always involved in the community, like, uh, helping other YouTubers. Actually, um, there was a video, and I, I can't remember the guy's name. You might remember this. So, I you know, I got a video suggested to me, and it was like, uh, you happen to be in the comment section of this guy's YouTube channel, like, coincidentally. It oh, was yeah. like some... It was like some 17-year-old kid talking about, I think, why he got into retro gaming or why he liked it. I don't know if you remember this. I'm sure you watch a lot of these. Yeah, it was like some 17-year-old kid talking about why he liked retro gaming. You know, he's a small YouTuber just starting out. And then yeah. you were there supporting him in the comments, coincidentally. That's what I like about your channel. You're always um, so involved in the community helping people, you know. Yeah, man. Uh, so when I first started... 
I didn't know what the heck I was doing, you know, and I, I actually planned on doing for my one year anniversary on YouTube, I was going to do an actual video about this, but I was going to basically uh, film my reaction to my very first YouTube video. And yeah. starting off, you know, man, I, I was talking about this. I thought I was going to be huge. I was, Oh, I'm going to be the next metal Jesus and, you know, and stuff like that. And then my very first video is like me trying to hold my phone underneath my chin and these are my uh, pickups. Um, and I opened in the package, and here's my Nintendo games I got and stuff like that. And I saw that. I went back and I watched the first like upload. Um, the game rooms changed way since then, and everything like that. And uh, when I put, and you know, once I had put out a few videos and I had like five subscribers, I started getting very discouraged, and you know, I thought maybe this is a big waste of time. Um. But then a couple of guys, I started becoming, my Instagram was taking off more, and I was getting more into this community, and why are flying around? Um, and then I think it was uh, Mark from Garage Gamers. He started popping in more on uh, my videos, commenting, you know, supporting me. And then from then on, you know, it just kind of, it, it makes me feel, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it makes me feel good to help support other people, but I, I, don't want somebody I've seen a lot of guys just stop making um just stop making videos and you know kind of ask them about it and they say that they just you know just didn't find the I don't know they find the drive to do it anymore and you know just didn't get supported or anything like yeah. that and I know how hard it is when you first start off and the first 100 subscribers is you know the hardest and that was it a lot of my first few were just um annoying people on Instagram, whether it be a free copy and paste message. Hey, blah, blah, blah. I liked your recent post. Will oh, yeah. you please check out my channel. And I did a couple sub for subs. So I would get, I was getting these subs, but nobody was watching my videos. And that was kind of my big thing too. But I like, uh, I can relate to a lot of guys on here and, you know, even with the age difference, whether they be 10 years younger than me or 10 years older, we share the same common thing, you know, anything to do with video games. So we can, talk about it and especially uh like you know i i can't personally remember that off the top of my head because you know i i comment on a lot i watch a lot of videos yeah. but seeing a 17 year old boy you know interested in nintendo or sega or you know old games like this is really cool because um we're gonna have, we're gonna have to face it that sooner or later physical media games are gonna die um you know nobody's gonna want to have physical stuff anymore everything's gonna be digital and and I can already see it in my two sons and stuff like that. So, I mean, not I've been getting a little bit off track from the question, but uh, yeah, man, it's it makes me feel better helping other people out. Um, I love doing giveaways. Uh, I love, uh, yeah, making sure that when someone posts a video out, I try to get on as fast as I can, you know, to check it out and leave a comment and a, and a thumbs up. All right. Well, I think that shows too because you have such a strong community around you, you know. Yeah, I always see the same people commenting on your stuff. You know, Will right. Train, Chill Sizzles. I think, uh, I think the guy's name Kamikaze or sorry, yeah, Kamikaze Ikun. Yeah, the guy's got yeah. a great guy's got a great channel. He deserves a lot more subs, uh, but I agree. Trying. I am. I sub to him. I agree. Yeah, he, yep. he's, he's a great guy. Uh, he actually recently sent me uh, Final Fantasy IX, which I needed. So, and nice. a little. Uh, I think the, it'll be in my pickup video that I've been working on too. But he sent me also a little the uh, instructional manual for the first Legend of Zelda. That's nice. See, it's like that's that community, you know, sending gifts and right. stuff. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Yeah, oh. I don't know. I was gonna say, you know, I'm gonna be sending you a package. Best believe. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, that's what's good about this community too. Is uh. You know, not all of us are out to get money. You know, like you'll see a lot of these resellers and stuff. There's nothing against resellers because I've done it in the past. Bought a lot of games, kept the ones I lost, yeah. kept yeah. the ones I wanted, sold the other ones to make my money back, and basically just got free games. But, you know, that's it's what it is, is helping each other out and trying to be, you know, I don't think of a good word for it, but just, you know, just helping each other out. Supportive. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean... You might have a game I wanted, and I might have a game that you wanted. You know, if it's just sitting on myself and you'd actually play it, I'd rather you have it than just sitting there. Yeah, I, I, definitely. 
You know, unrelated, I just want to say real quick. You know, there's this YouTuber named Pete Duh. The most impressive time I've ever seen somebody, like, sell off the doubles, he got a lot of Game Boy games, and just by selling the doubles, he made more money than he spent. Right? That was, like... <laughs> <laughs> hey, round of you would be surprised. I was contemplating earlier. I was looking on Macari, and someone was selling Mario sixty four and Mario Kart for I think sixty bucks, and I almost grabbed it, only because I already have Mario Kart on sixty four, and I know you could sell that for about exactly that. So you can end up getting yeah. you know a forty fifty dollar game for almost free then. And and when I first started collecting, that's how I did it because, like I said, you know my wife's a stay at stay at home mom i have three kids a mortgage two cars you know and stuff like that so i can't i can't go off and buy hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of games every few weeks you know i have to try and figure out a way to do it that's why i recently did that purge too where i sold you know a bunch of stuff just so i could get stuff i actually wanted because at first that was the goal was to just you know collect whatever that's why i was buying so many systems so if i seen something pop up in goodwill then i would just be able to buy it but that you know then you start getting too much stuff and then it's like yeah. well i really want this and how am i going to get this when i you know i have 30 games that i don't want don't have room i know like i, I am jealous of your basement and i i always wanted a basement because right. i'm pretty limited on space you know i like uh you know avgn's basement is just like it seems oh, like it has an endless that. amount of room it's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, uh, I had a buddy on Instagram post something earlier, too. And he actually took a, I don't, it's not wallpaper, but it's something like that. And he's got, like, the old school, like, arcade brick wall looking all yeah. around. Yeah, I think. that's awesome. Um, awesome. I don't watch him as, anymore, but was it R, RGT95? 85, 85, I think. Yeah, something like that. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. The one video of his I actually really enjoyed was him talking about doing something similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. You know, one thing I've been thinking about doing for... Eventually, I want to make a video on the Atari 2600. And I want to get, like... I want to print up some fake, you know, like, 70s wood paneling. And I want right. to get, like, an old 70s couch and have the wood paneling in the background for the video. Well, and... I I've talked to this one guy, he was uh, doing his game room, and, he, and I said, man, I really love the wood paneling you have in there. And he said, uh, he's like, really? I really don't like that. I'm like, well, that's what makes it more cooler, you know, man? It yeah. really makes it more 80s or whatever. But I guess some people, you know, want more sleek looking stuff where I'd rather have the older school looking stuff. That's, I mean, I could have bought, like, my shelves I made here. I could have spent, you know... 100 200 bucks on nice bookshelves but i kind of like the way that it was just you know i didn't even use the cheaper looking wood because it, i thought it made it look nicer made it look more yeah retro like somebody just decided to put up quick shelves and yeah, yeah. it um i forget how fortunate i am to have a big basement room like this and you know actually when we were uh purchasing the house i found this room down here and it's really big and i'm like man this would be perfect for a game room and, you know and i it was one of the main things that really sold the house for yeah. me, especially when my wife said I could use it for that. And, you know, I see, you know, I talked to some guys, and I forget how nice it is to have a big room like this, because I know, uh, I don't know if you ever watch NES uh, Attic, but his yeah, game yeah. is actually in a closet, like a big walk-in closet. I mean, he's been doing videos about how he's been doing that, and it's really cool, on, you know, to see that, but then it's also like, you know, he's got a Wii U kiosk that he can't even fit in there. And, you know, just being like, well, if I really wanted to get a couple of arcade, you know, one-up cabinets or something like that, I, I'd easily have, could make room for them. That's what I love, guy. like, all the game rooms. That's what I love. Um, every game room is, like, filled with, like, unique shelving and, like, whatever fits that shape of the room. Like, that's why it's so cool to – I think that's why game room tools are so popular. People just want to see, right. like, what creative solutions have you come up with and – the design well, yeah, layout. yeah, the pickup ideas, man. I mean, uh, I know you, your surprise uh, video that did so well, it had that over the top, was it about that Smash, that Smash game or Smashing Driving game? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then my very first, not, I wouldn't, 
not viral by any standards, but my very first video was my uh, 2019 November uh, game room tour video. And we were kind of talking about, you know, quantity quality over quantity earlier but that was just a that was just a quantity one that was uh me walking around my game room filming really badly and a video that took maybe five to ten minutes and i uploaded it and i was on nights and i fell asleep and i woke up about two hours later because your body goes through weird stuff when you're swapping like that so i had to go to the bathroom and uh, i i checked it and i had about 100 views in like two hours i was like holy crap i mean that was with me, that was I was lucky if I got 15 at that point. And I fell back asleep, and I woke up before I went to work, and I was up to 200 views. And I was like, what's going on? What, what did I do different on this video than the other ones? I mean, I just filmed my game room. And, you know, over – I don't think I got to 1,000, but I know I got pretty close. And I was just astonished by how it just grew and grew and grew, and I couldn't believe it. And, and, you know, sometimes that's what happens. You just have a video that blows up and. Yeah, yeah it just keeps growing. It's like, how, how did this happen? Just my my most popular video right now is an unboxing I did of my headset which is right here. Just a standard one from Amazon, nothing fancy. And, and it didn't get any hits, barely any hits for months. And then once it's got. Uh, must be because of the uh, pandemic or something like that. People are at home gaming more and just shopping. And, man, I, yeah, about every two days, I think I get 25 to 50 hits on it. And it's almost 1,000 views, and it's just very random video. So it, It's always the ones you least expect, too. Like, on my second channel, I, I made, like, a stupid, like, back when everyone was ranking stuff on that website... I made a dumb video just ranking candy bowls, and it has a hundred views. It's like <laughs> on a video I don't care about. It's like I know, oh, right? God. It's it's pretty weird how that hat works out sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you never know which video is gonna really get the views. See, it's like I thought about doing a game room tour. I don't have a game room. Like some of my stuff is in this room, and some's across yeah. where the Xbox set is and those that bookcase set in the corner. But I, I always have so much, like, trash and empty, like, plates around me that I feel like the people in the comments would judge. So I'm like, yeah. I, I can't release this. Well, I mean, sometimes it's just, you know, who cares what they say kind of yeah. thing. And Because I've seen even the bigger YouTubers doing pickup videos and stuff like that. And then they, they view in on their car where they're <laughs> yeah. sitting in the driver's seat or you're sitting in the passenger seat is all the games they got. And I've kind of looked around and just went, <laughs> Because it, it was a very, very clean cut man and stuff like that. And then yeah. I looked in this vehicle and it was just, yeah, it was, I was just like, oh, <laughs> you know, kind of one of those things. But it was just like, but I it is what it is. I think you'd have that reaction if you saw this room. I'm ah. sitting next to five paper plates and like eight of those chicken pot pie things. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's just right. Hey, man, it's your, it's your room. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like a big cleaning sweep every so often, you know? Yeah. Well, and then, you know, I'm not, this room ain't perfect. If I would move this round to, I mean, obviously I'm going to try and make it look good for a video and stuff like that. But otherwise, yeah. I'm, so, I'm so disorganized. I have my boys getting in trouble all the time. So I'm taking their TVs away. So I got like two TVs sitting over here that aren't even hooked up because they're in yeah. trouble right now. And an Xbox One sitting over there and two uh cr tvs which i don't even know how the hell i'm gonna do with them yet and by the time i think i have everything organized and looking good i get more stuff and then i come in here and then i'm too busy to put it somewhere so i just kind of throw it in a pile throw it in a pile and then that's what i've been kind of enjoying about doing those uh game room vlog video log uh videos because people actually yeah. kind of want to see that and yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but just going back on what you were talking earlier about uh, watching game room videos. Yeah, that is a good idea to, because I see a lot of what the other guys do, and then it gives me ideas for my room. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just kind of fun to see what people have too. You, you might see something that you never thought of, or you might see a video game from your past that you completely spaced off, and then they pull it out and show it off, and it's like, oh, oh man, I need to get that game. Or yeah. Where the hell did that guy get that sweet poster at or whatever, you know? And 
I've definitely had that with the Xbox original. I'll see a game I've never known about. I'm like, I've got to investigate this weird obscure yeah, game. Yeah, right. Definitely. Some two hundred dollar game, and you're like, oh nope, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I th- I think part of it too for your uh, the reason why people liked your game room video so much was like, you know, I think well not just because you know you're so you're so humble, you're not like egotistical, but also. Because your collection's not, like, giant. Like, when you see Metal Jesus or something, it's like, well, he has 25 million games, and it's like, <laughs> I'm Probably not just, rich. Yeah, and, and who yeah. knows how often he actually plays. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I then, think your collection is, like, people are like, this is a great collection, but it's not, like, so insane that this blows me away. And it's like, oh, I'll never reach that level. <laughs> I I would like to reach that level, but, you yeah. know, uh, yeah, it's kind of one of those things. Uh, I do like the feeling, though, of inviting a friend over and him coming down, you know, and at first they're kind of, they do that, you know, kind of looking around and like, man, you got a lot of games. and But then they'll go over, and I've heard people talking about this before, they'll go over and then they'll look at me, like, oh, man, you got uh, Star Wars Rogue One, man. I, I played this all the time as a kid. Or, oh, man, you got you got Mario Paint, you got the, the mouse pad and the... Miles for that was cool. I remember so and so had that when I was a kid, and you know that's really cool. I like that feeling too. So it's like, well, do you want to play? Yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to play it and then hook it up quick. And they had that option too with all the different consoles. Like I remember in your live stream, you were playing Twisted Metal with a friend of yours. Yeah, they just get that option, and also like um, you got kids, you know, you can show yeah. the young people the old stuff, you know, introduce the young kids to like how it used to be. Teach them. Yeah, they they're kind of so they they are uh, they're a little bit different than I am. They're more sports and jock like. As growing up, I was more of a nerd, reading books and playing games like this. Yeah, um, I can relate. They did. Yeah, they did. Uh, I hooked up Paperboy one time on Nintendo, and they actually sat down. And they played that for a while. Um, they're not a big fan of, I try, I thought they like Mario Kart on Super Nintendo more, but they do not like that one. I think it's kind of hard for them because they're used to the newer ones. Um, yeah. but they, I did a stream one night and it was, uh, that just let them play and they, they played NBA Jam and it's actually been one of my better streams. It has over, I think a hundred views now. Um, but yeah, they had, they have a blast playing NBA Jam. Um, and some other, someone different ones here and there but yeah that, that just having that option um i do get kind of cringy sometimes when they're down here because i said don't break that don't break that <laughs> why are you moving that don't move that and you know but they're kids so yeah but that's probably the young one you gotta watch out for too because he'll just start messing with stuff without even oh, knowing he, it probably he loves it down here he'll he'll come down and uh especially if i'm uh, if i'm on nights and i sleep during the day so my yeah. wife and him to come down around the time i need to go to work and they'll wake me up and then um he'll grab like my funko pops or something like that and then he'll be trying to run off with one of those and <laughs> uh i'll be i don't know if i did it yet but uh i got at goodwill i spent like a buck and i got a big mario stuffed yeah uh stuffed animal or stuff not stuffed animal but you yeah, know like what a I mean. plush yeah a big one and uh he keeps coming he keeps wanting to come down and take him and i let him have it for a while because <laughs> He's he's gonna be three in September and uh yeah, he knows who Mario is, he knows who Yoshi is, he stuff like that. I'll be wearing one of my shirts and he'll stop and go, Mario and I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. Well, it's like you gotta think like if you let the you know, young kid play the Odyssey too, is there can't be more than like fifty people under ten who's even played an Odyssey two recently. Oh, so, like, it's I, gotta be I, such a low I, amount. I, 33 years old and i never played one until you know a couple weeks ago and right back here (laughs) i don't think very many people did that's why there's no odyssey free yeah 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 it's very i've actually have i think i have the odyssey game club i don't think you can see it up there but it's a little thing it was so i when i opened that thing up and it had all the warranty information in it i've been trying to get a hold of the company Trying yeah. to see if I can send it in just for something like them to sign yeah. something, send it but just for something fun. And I was going to make a video of it, but yeah, it, it's. I think that ship has sailed. That company is either <laughs> not responding to it or they. I think it was it's Phillips and Magnavox, I believe, that made it, 
And I think they're focusing more on their new endeavors with all their electronics and TVs and stuff, and they don't yeah. care about that stuff. But well, they're the but old that's com- kind of, be those... pretty cool. I emailed yeah. the company, and I haven't heard back. So, well, that's the sad thing about all those old companies is like a lot of them they just exist in name only, which is who knows what Magnavox is now. I don't even know if they make TVs anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know they they did have some cool art uh, CRTVs. You know, I wonder about Magnavox, actually, and there's no answer to this, but because they have the Magnavox Odyssey 1, they have the game console patent, so I wonder if, like, Nintendo and Microsoft still have to pay Magnavox money to make consoles, because they technically still have the patent, I believe. Right? I, That's what I wonder. You know, I, well, I know uh, a year or two ago, people were getting excited for the Nintendo 64 Mini, because Nintendo... Uh, Repatented the, the design or something for the N64, yeah. so you can look on that on record. And I guess that they had, yeah, repatented it or did something that would resurface. So everybody was assuming that the Nintendo 64 Mini was coming, but it hasn't come yet. Yeah, well, see, Nintendo, I think they're gonna keep that cash cow a little bit longer, like maybe like when the Switch sales are starting to wane and the new consoles like a yo out. That might be the perfect time to, you know, get that mini out for Christmas or something. Exactly. And, you know, Nintendo's geniuses when it comes to that. I mean, look look what they did with the, the Nintendo mini that first time around. They were selling, geez, 400, 500 bucks for one of those things. And yeah. they were holding off production and stuff, building hype, building hype. And Super Nintendo wasn't as much, but it was still, I mean, you could still, I think, huge. You'd have to pay about 100 bucks to get one nowadays. But even with that switch and stuff, how just crazy. I don't I don't understand that whole switch craze that went on, but from what I understood it was uh kids were staying home and parents were wanting something for them to do. Oh, yeah. well, non gamer parents think of anything, they're like, Oh, Nintendo and then everybody went for the switch and no one went for anything else. Yeah, I think that's that's the that makes sense and also I think a lot of people don't know that the Wii U existed. So they're like, oh, a new console since the Wii. Right, and I admit that I was in the same boat. I thought I thought the Wii U was like, uh, what do they call that, a prep roll or whatever? Yeah, like for, an add-on for the Wii. Yeah, for the, I didn't know it was a whole new system itself. And essentially, it was almost like a prototype for the Switch. I mean, it was, yeah, the Switch in its baby form, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. I've been wanting to get one, but it's kind of one of those systems that if I don't, I think if I don't jump on it soon, they're going to get freaking crazy priced. Yeah. I think like it'll probably get expensive. Although there is the argument that like most of the games I think are on switch now. So maybe it'll keep the price yeah. down. And that, that's one thing I didn't, I kind of don't like, but it, it is what it is, is that how uh, Mario Kart uh, and all these other games were released on the Wii U, and then they just kind of revamped them up and threw them on yeah, the Switch. Yeah. I guess so little people played them. It's like a good way to make a lot of money Well, like a game that's right. already been made. Yeah, just remaster it. And... Yeah, definitely. Again, that up another question real quick we've answered some of them kind of right here and there yeah uh, i've got some youtube related questions too but uh one thing i want to ask related to the collection you have kind of been on a quest you know to get all the sega consoles and besides the handhelds you have been successful you know you've built up a great collection right. what's the next one What's the next consoles you're going for? So I've been people have been poking at me about well you don't you don't have a Sega CDX, and uh, I was like well, uh, I was it's one of those things where it's three hundred some dollars for one of those yeah. things, and the only, the last time I did a quest for that was for a Switch and. The reason I was so successful with that one was before I started that, I hit up a garage sale and they had, you know, many kids. Each one had a Nintendo DS 
Each one had all these things. So I, and they had them on a garage sale for about two bucks a piece. So I was buying up all the, I was buying up all these Nintendo DSs and games and everything. And I, after I, I, I think I profited about 150 bucks alone on that garage sale. So it's really, and you know, we've already talked about it a little bit about how, you know, my family and my living situation and everything comes first. So it's really hard to drop money on that. Now you were talking about getting these consoles recently. So I got, I got the tower power now and, you know, I got the master system and a lot of the way I was able to get that stuff was my, it was my birthday that month and I did the purge or whatever. Um, but yeah, my wife asked me, you know, what do you want? And I said, uh, just give me some money for some games. <laughs> and she said, because she said the one time she would get me stuff and, uh, so well, I never knew what to get you because you know I didn't want to buy you a game you didn't want. I said, yeah, I know. So she kind of she gets me cool stuff here and there. Like uh, she got me it was my thirty third uh, birthday, so she got me uh, got Mario on it, it's got Made in the eighties on it, yeah. and stuff like that, um, and stuff like that. Uh, and my original one console that I really really wanted was an NES top loader, and you know they. One of the biggest tips I can give anybody for a console like that is just to be pay- patient. Um, so I live in rural Iowa. We don't have any big cities around here. Um, some guy actually put on Facebook Marketplace. He had all these consoles he listed, and the top loader happened to be in there. Um, and I I kind of knew him, but we weren't exactly friends, but more of acquaintances. And then... You know, so I talked to him and uh, I said I was interested in the top loader and he wanted, I think, 60 bucks for it. Now, that being said, that is a very good price. Right yeah, there. I can't say it. Sounds like a great deal compared to what yeah. I've seen him go for. You know, the top loaders easily go for 100 plus bucks. So I said, I'm interested in it. I said, but I don't, don't have 60 bucks right now because, you know, it was when money was tight for a little while there. Yeah. And he said, well, what do you got? And I said, well, I, I got 30 bucks. Would you take that? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, great, cool. So I drove up there and came to found out that he needed money really fast because his vehicle had broke down on the side of the road uh, and he needed to get it towed home. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise, yeah, he was going to get in trouble for it or something like that. So that was one of the other things. Um, I think... You know, besides all the ones I have, a Wii U might be one of the next options. Because then if I get that, I will have, unless I'm forgetting something, I'll have almost every, I'll have every Nintendo console. Yeah, maybe like not the Game & Watch, but that, that's a weird one anyway. Yeah. You, are, I mean, you have all the ones you need. Yeah, and that, and you know, that goes with kind of, that goes with the boat, whether or not you're going to come, that's why I was kind of saying the home consoles, because it was like, you know, then they're going to be like, well... You got to get a game gear, then you got to get the blue game gear, then you got to get yeah, the Nomad, yeah. and then it's just kind of like maybe down the road. Um, I'm not a huge handheld gamer, so it was never really, uh, I don't know if I want to, I'm not gonna say required, there's another word I'm thinking of it, but I'm not really a big handheld gamer, so it was kind of, yeah. I wanted this home systems, and then I got them, and I had made sure I got all three Genesis models, so in case somebody was like, well, you don't have the Model 3 Genesis, so it's not complete, but I came to find out later on, too, I, I talked about wanting to get a Pico or whatever, and that's just kind of like a home learning one, but yeah, then somebody... I feel like the, the Pico I'd put in the same category as the Game & Watch. It's like a real novelty, but not really needed in the console. Yeah, if I got it, I'm not going to play it, and it's going to sit yeah. there. It's not... If I see it pop up in Macari or something for twenty bucks, sure I'll snag it then. <laughs> yeah, like, definitely then. Yeah, one hundred fifty bucks. Let's get it up there and then just because you know you do that and then you buy yeah. it and then you put it up on the shelf and you just like, all right, what next? And then, <laughs> have you have you seen that? Sit. Have you seen that AVGN episode about the uh, like the stadium events? I like, think so. It's just it, it's like um, he got the golden gray coat. Yeah, and it's like he does the thing where it's like he finally got it what and then he just puts it on the shelf and he looks at it like the collection is complete because <laughs> that's what you do as a collectible you look at it and that's, and that's kind of how it goes i mean i plan on playing the sega cd um a master system if i pick up more games but the thing with the master system is i gotta find good games for it because i've already played a couple 
that I bought in that. I was just kind of like, well, this ain't, these aren't good games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it came with Ghostbusters, which is just like the, the original NES one, which is a horrible game. <laughs> it's not good at all. But uh, yeah, I would say the next one I'd probably try to get is I'm, I'm looking, I'll probably look for a Wii U just to have it. Um, otherwise, I mean, I got almost all the consoles i mean they yeah, can have yeah. Sega saturn i got a dreamcast i got yeah well all the ones that you really need i mean there's a lot of like second gen consoles that all fascinating but you don't really need them like well, like the tiger electronics r type yeah the old head. <laughs> I, bought, yeah. I bought that but i bought it broken oh. well i was disappointed in that because i was going to do a funny video about that but I bought it. And it's broken. It doesn't have the little uh, the red thing that you put on your eye. Um, oh, yeah. but speaking of that, speaking of red and blinding you, I am at one point hoping to get a Virtual Boy. Um, but that's still one of those holy grails. You're either going to find it missing something or it's going to yeah. be broken. Well, it doesn't so look so pay cool. Two, two, two to $300 for a working one. Yeah, it does look so cool, too, as like on the shelf or something. Yeah. Like, it's a, such a, like, 90s, like, nostalgic thing. Yeah, I mean, now, that's some of my favorite stuff is uh, I'll be watching people's videos and be like, oh, there's Virtual Boy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. the power, that power glove I'd like to get, too, just to, even if it didn't work, just to do like uh, Gabo did on some of his videos with Pixel Game Squad where he's just wearing it around out in public, yeah. just funny stuff like that. That's the thing with collecting, though, and, like, uh, I'm sure you can relate, like, buying a whole new console because it's such a like a big chunk of change at at one yeah. moment there's such a hesitation like i wanted like a coleco vision there's only second gen consoles like an odyssey 2 that like yeah. i'm fascinated by but i can just never bring myself to click the buy it now on ebay i'm like oh well and that's like well same with the so the way i got my odyssey 2 was very you know some guy was nearby he lived local uh, he's actually going to be my oldest, uh, his principal next year. So he didn't know what it was. He didn't even know if it worked. He didn't even know yeah. how to hook it up. So it was kind of a blind. I can't remember how much I paid for it now, but it wasn't much at all. But then it also worked out. So you'll see, I don't know if you saw it on Instagram, but the guy got a hold of me a little bit later on because he gave me this box of uh, in television games. Yeah, and uh, they don't they don't work with the Odyssey too. So I'm like, he's got to have that system somewhere else, or you know, long gone. Well, he got a hold of me about two months later and said, I figured you'd be interested in this, and he sent me a picture. It's uh, I think it's this. It'll be in my next pickup video. Uh, a super retro or super arcade system or something yeah. like that, and it's basically Sears's ripoff of the Intellivision. So and this thing is filthy. It is That's awesome. It's, it's been sitting in his garage or something, yeah. and it works. It took a lot of cleaning for some part, but it works. So now I just got to – but it was kind of crazy. He's like – I said, well, how much do you want for it? He says, 20 bucks if we can get it to work. If you can't, just keep it free. And I got to work sometime. I'm going to have to owe him 20 bucks. <laughs> nice. Hey, your console collection in 2020 alone is growing so oh. much ridiculous oh my god i don't i don't you know how much stuff i get till i do my pickup videos and i had a at one point i had a box or a little bin that every time i'd buy something for that month i'd put it in the yeah. bin and then i'd go to do my pickup video <clears throat> all over here and then it was like jesus christ this is gonna be a 30 minute video <laughs> yeah even and then my fear was with the covid19 my pickup videos weren't going to be that good well all I did is shop more online. More people were selling stuff, so it hasn't been that bad. Nice. Well, that's good. <laughs> you know, that stimulus money is what I... That helped me pick up a Genesis and a Super Nintendo finally. I, yeah, I can uh, see it right back there behind you. Yeah, I finally picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Got that Genesis primarily for Sonic, too. That Sonic yeah. games were the first ones I had to get for that. Yeah, well, looks like you got a pretty good Super Nintendo. It looks pretty white, too, so that's good. Oh, uh, you best believe I searched out for a non-yellow one. Specific. Yeah. I don't like the look of the yellow ones. I was looking for a non-yellowed one. I, I almost want to get... I So I have a very, uh, a very white one as well. Yeah. Um, 
and I bought it from a guy on Facebook who had it sitting basically mint in his closet all these years away from because I think it's something to do with the light or the UV light that catches yeah, on or something yeah. that, that yellows them. Um, but I almost want to buy just a yellow one just to have a yellow one. Yeah, just to have like, it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, something about the yellow one. So I know it's just plastic, but something's right. like almost gross about the yellowness. I know it's just plastic, but I something about it. Well, even uh, first thing that comes to mind is it's the smoker. Yeah, yeah. And that's not the case most of the time. Yeah, it's like smoker or cheese or this, nothing good. Oh, <laughs> good so cheese on there. Yeah, it's not like the eBay listings where it's just like a stock photo of a Super Nintendo. I'm like, nah, I need to see this thing. <laughs> what am I? What are you gonna buy? Buy? You gonna show up and you have roaches in it or something? Or <laughs> oh yeah, I've coke, seen those stories. Coke built on it from the freaking nineties. <laughs> yeah, dude, I I hate bugs, especially spiders. If I open up a console and there's a bunch of roaches spilled out into my room, I yeah. I, I panic and <laughs> feel like holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I would probably too. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, God. we had roaches at work one time, and it's kind of common because we work with corn and stuff like that. Yeah, that wasn't very fun at all. Yeah, definitely not. You know, and I see like a giant spider. It's like, all right, this has to be dealt with now. I can't live in the same room with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Town ain't big enough for the two of us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, you know the the fucking the most traumatic story I've ever had was a spider. You know, like, uh, light switches, how it's, like, that plastic cover, kind of? Yeah. The spider was, like, a massive one right behind it, and its legs were dangling through the cracks in the light switch hanging down, like, moving back and forth. That was, like, holy shit. That's just, like... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, where I live, we're lucky. We really don't have, you know, poisonous snakes or anything like that, but we do have, you know, barn spiders. Barn spiders... Yeah get pretty big man and they're kind of scary looking but you know the only thing we got to worry about around here is like black widow spiders and you don't ever really yeah. see them so otherwise biggest fear we have is hitting deer with our cars yeah. <laughs> that's all we got yeah that's a risk up here too you yeah. never know and that's, that's gonna run a crust definitely or at least right. for you though as, lo as long as it's not a poisonous spider you could probably send one of the boys to go get it you're like, yeah. hey, I'm, bu I'm busy right now. Can you go get that? Right. Yeah. One of them, maybe. The other one's kind of, the other one's kind of like his bomb, and he's kind of afraid of stuff like that. Yeah. I don't mind the little spiders. It's just like when they get real big. Those are the right. ones that's like, I, yeah. I can't, I can't be like there's people who just pick them up with their hand and move them. Yeah, I know. That's the way I'm with toad. Like that's the way I am with reptiles. I'm, I get if I know a snake's there, I'm fine. But yeah. They pop up, I'll probably squeal. I used to pick up snakes and lizards, you know, as a kid. I think we yeah. all used to find them in the woods and stuff. I never minded those. Like, I can't, yeah. like, the people who are afraid of frogs or something, I can't relate. But I can only relate to the spider one. All right. Definitely. Now, I don't know how long you want to go. I don't want to keep you all night. You know, what time is it, even? I think it's been about an hour. Uh, we can go a little bit longer. Okay. I got more questions. Okay. I, I, I just don't want to keep you too long. All right. I understand. Uh, let's see. Okay. I got a YouTube-related question for you. Has there been, like, um, any videos in the past you wanted to make but never did? Like, just never got around to it. Well, there's... Off the top of my head, there's none that really stick out too much. Um, yeah. But I... There's been stuff... Most of the stuff is um, is live stuff, whether it be at Goodwill and stuff like that. So I'm very anxious. I'm kind of a shy person. So I'm not comfortable like holding my phone up and recording when I'm out in public because, you know, I don't... I, I kind of feel like people are would get mad or, you know, just anxiety. Yeah. I can really relate to that, definitely. There, there is a lot of times where, uh, like, I was talking about that NES top loader. I've been talking about some of my other pickups, um, my Sega Saturn, that I drove to some guy's house at, like, 1 in the morning to get. 
and there was videos and stuff like that where like you know i have like retro rick and some of them they do their live stuff it's like uh and i'd really like to be able to do stuff like that but i think the only way i'd be able to is if i had like a little gopro or something that wasn't insanely visible yeah like just and hey uh how's it going man um yeah <laughs> it's, uh what okay uh I'm getting goodwill today, and I'm looking at the games, you know. And... Yeah, I get one of the old cameras out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big ones on your... <laughs> yeah. One of the old, like, newscasts from the 80s cameras. Yep. Otherwise, yeah, they, and besides stuff like that, just, um, just more... I'd like to do more streaming stuff. I'd like to play more games. I, I run out of time. There's, but I, I have all these games, and I probably have only played about 1% of them. Um. And I think that's what it'd be. I'd, I'd like to do more live streaming and playing games online and yeah. have a game down. do more live stuff. It would be a lot more fun. Definitely. I, I like the live stuff. Sometimes I can't tune in because I'm on night crew looking. Well, when, I I, when I was a night off, I always try to tune in. Right. I was happy running on my second monitor. And that's kind of the way it is with some of them, too, is uh, when the people do the live stuff and then I miss it. And it, it's like, dang it. Yeah. <laughs> But oh. yeah, well, I mean, no, it's fun though, definitely. Yeah. Uh, what all related to the previous question, kinda? Is there any future video plans you have? I mean, you don't have to say them out loud if you don't want to, but uh, we're kind of besides uh, that, we're going to be doing that uh, Satan's Toe one, so that one's going to be an upcoming one. I am currently uh. Well, I just uploaded it to YouTube, but I haven't released it yet. I did a, so I kind of did a little vlog of actually going to Raiders, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I was talking about that, how my theater has been playing old movies. So I have that. I'll probably release that in a couple I days. Know, that's I I see you again. Do you see me again? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we uh we got Raiders of the Lost Ark. I got a video about that coming out. We just kind of talked about it, and I kind of filmed some. Nice. And that's what nice. I was talking about earlier. Was I kind of wanted to do more live stuff? So we have us walking up to Goodwill, and I just had music in the background and Taco Bell and stuff like that with my two kids, my two yeah. older kids. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just I'm kind of I'm I'm researching spicy stuff to do. I'm trying to kind of keep going with those videos. Um. Um, got a pickup video coming up soon. Nice. Um, otherwise, with that, I've just kind of been more, like I said earlier, hopefully some more live streaming. But, yeah, that's about what I got going on right now. You know, the one I did, I think I've run it past you before. Like, I think that's going to be one that's like the spicy one, but with the super sour woolhead candy. Yep, and then that's that's kind of... My wife asked me about that because she said, what are you going to do after you? Because I was searching through Amazon the one night. I was like, yeah, yeah, it was either extremely expensive spicy candy or cheap, like, like kicking, kicking yeah. ass jelly beans or something <laughs> like that, where it was just a dog <laughs> and they were jalapeno flavored or something. And I was like, that's not that's not spicy enough, you know. So yeah. it's either going to come down to starting to do uh, really sour stuff or. Uh, Whatever Vegemite is, I don't know what that is. Somebody says it's an Australian delicacy oh. or something that's really bitter and not very good at all, but they like yeah. it on in and down under. Uh, doing some crazy stuff like that, trying to do something that's, you know, I like the food related challenges. Um, yeah, I think and I can always go hotter, but it's not yeah. fun if you're taking hot sauce and all the time and I get some kind of way to make it a little bit more entertaining or too bad I didn't have like virtual reality or something so people yeah. can watch me try it <laughs> yeah it's like mix it up you know gross food maybe As, I think there's there's so many options you know when I was a kid on my old channel my old cringy channel I made when I was like in middle school I used to do right. like like you mix gross stuff and you drink it like milk and grape juice or something Ooh. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we'll... <laughs> yeah. You know, um, no, I relate to your thing, though, about filming in public. Because right. I, I was working on a video. It's like, you know, 
things I regret buying for the game collection. And but even filming in my yard with neighbors around, I was like, oh, the anxiety with people around. Yeah. I, I can't have anybody heal me. Yeah, and it, it, it is stupid because you know I might do that in goodwill. I might see you know, uh, I don't. I'm a. I love uh, TV show Friends, and uh, and then one of the episodes, Phoebe runs really funny. Like yeah, <laughs> like really goofy looking. And then uh, Rachel, the other lady, is uh, she is very uh embarrassed by it and you know phoebe says to her well why do you care you're probably never going to see these people again yeah. and and i can relate to that you know and that's what suffering from anxiety and stuff like that kind of goes to it's like, yes i mean why why should i care what they think you know and it's obvious one of those things where their opinion really doesn't matter yeah. and yeah. i i can understand that but it's hard to you know go through with that so Plus, I don't want to get yelled at by if I'm doing because I know I watched the Pixel Game Squad one time when they were trying to film in a GameStop, and the managers like, "No, you can't do that here." You know, and I don't, I don't know if Goodwill would be like that or the thrift stores I go to. So I think that's probably one of the more scary yeah. factors with it too. Is am I going to get yelled at or get kicked out for doing this? Or oh, it's just like that anxiety feeling where you go to film. It's like, all right, I'm going to do it right now. Oh, wait, oh, I'll do it right now. It's like you keep trying to, like, all right, 10 seconds from now, I'm just going to go for it. Then you don't. Right. Yeah. And, and, you, and you know, a good tip with something like that, too, is I don't know if it was in uh, We're the Millers or something. But when it comes to a lot of things, I have actually used this trick where I just kind of, I count to three, and then no matter what, I just do it. So I just like, yeah. you know, it's like one, two, three, and then I do it. And then that kind of helps a little bit, but kind of, places my mind somewhere else that's been some other stuff too is trying to just you know not overthink it which is hard well the, the most difficult shot for me is i wanted to like because it was like you know like gaming regrets so some of it's like you know shitty stuff or trash so i created this character called trash man where i took like a rolling rock box and i put eye holes in it and yeah. I wanted to run across my yard, but then the neighbors, it's like, what if they see me through the window or something? <laughs> They'll be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? What's he doing? <laughs> He's just running through the yard. Ah, <laughs> yeah. That's a trash man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day. Yeah. You know another video I wanted to make? I can't decide if it's too stupid or not. I want to make a video that it's like titled, right? It's like game hunting episode one. But then like the beginning, it looks like I'm walking in like the poking lot of goodwill, but then it's actual game hunting. Like I'm in the woods with camouflage on and it's like a dream cast on a tree. And I'm like, there's one up there, a sweet dream cast deal. <laughs> Some dumb you, know, it's, it's, you know what? Uh, there's never really a stupid idea for anything. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's always somebody out there that's going to like it. And I, and I think if you could do that, and even if it was something dumb, like if you would do an old school, like with the Red Rider BB gun or something, yeah. and just pick a, ba a bad game and just like, oh, there's one right there, and then shoot it with the BB gun or something like that, that would be, and then just kind of hauling it off, like by the tail or whatever, just back home. And that'd be, <laughs> yeah. that'd be probably a pretty decent intro to a pickup video. Yeah, definitely. Like another idea I had, like I'd pick like a, game that's universally known as terrible it's like superman 64 or something and then i would try to give like the most over the top angry reaction to it possible like i'd right. be like beating the shit out of the game with a hammer and I'd just yeah. go over the top but one day you know, do like a fake review too and just hype it up as one of the best games of all time and yeah. then somebody sees it and thinks that and then buys it and they're like what this is garbage <laughs> yeah Superman 64 is the most precise controls possible. It is not clunky at all. And it's very forgivable. Yeah. Very gripping storyline. Kept me yeah. invested the whole time. That is, that is one of those games where you just wonder what the heck were they thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm glad it exists, but I feel bad for any kid who got that for, like, Christmas right. and stuck with it. Uh, same with ET, ET on the Atari, man. I remember playing that as a kid. I didn't even, I don't even understand it till this day. What the heck's the point of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's confusing. Like, what? To be fair, there is a, other Atari games like it where you put it on. It's like I don't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. 
I don't is know that what I'm looking at. Yeah, is that am I that guy or am I what is, what is <laughs> yeah what is square over here? Yeah, it's like I don't know what to do on the screen. Right. As good as Tony games, and then there's the ones where it's just like confusing as fuck. Right. Definitely, definitely. And I think I'll ask you one more question. I right, wrap this up real quick. Okay. Uh, let's see. Pick a good one, you know? Yeah. Because hmm. we've already touched on some of this. Yeah. Freelance. Yeah. Uh, I guess just talk about, like, uh, what has been kind of, like, the best and worst parts about doing YouTube. Well, I can say easily the best part um, is all the friends I've made. Um, I, I've gone over it. We talked about it earlier about I live in rural Iowa. I live in a town with maybe 600 people. Yeah. Um, growing up to, I, I, I was talking about how much of a nerd I was and stuff like that. Well, I was really into Dungeons and Dragons, but living in a community like this, nobody else is into it. Yeah. And it's hard to find anything about that. And that's what I've grown to love so much about the internet is finding and relating more to, you know, more people out there. Um, you know, you're not by yourself. You're not, you know, it's like in high school and stuff like that. People could pick on you for something like that. And you, you just, you know, be, feel isolated and stuff like that. But it's great going around, uh, you know, in not only our country, other countries, I talked about the Garage Gamers earlier. There's also Dad and Lads Gaming, right. you know, guys from across the sea that are, you know, they, and just talking to them, even though they got a different kind of uh, slang. I don't, you know, like, yeah. they got different, like, I had to ask a couple times, what, what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's beer. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I got it then, but. They'd have, they have different slang and stuff like that, but you know we all on some level relate everything gaming and even though it might be a Genesis here and a Mega Drive there, you know, and that's that's easily been the best part about this thing is um, just you know sharing my the same common interests as a bunch of other people. Yeah, um, getting community better. for for sure. Yeah, uh, probably the worst thing about it is sometimes. Uh, you know, working so hard on the video, uh, putting your, you know, putting your passion, your heart, your soul into a video, and then it not do very well. Yeah. Or um, there is there is one time where I got very, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, very dis discouraged. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. Um, when I had a video up that, you know, had a and it may have had a different decent amount of views but it had you know like four or five thumbs down um you know dislikes and then stuff like that and it really was just kind of like you know why am i doing this anymore i mean and but that also goes along the lines with the best part about this you know when we're talking about the friends and stuff is because you talked about how we had the tight name community and we got i got a bunch of buddies on here that i always know that even though a video that I make might not go viral. Right. Might not get a thousand views. At least I know my friends will actually enjoy it and they'll actually watch it and stuff like that. And that, and that's just enough like that. Um, I have fun doing these response videos and everything like that. And it, and it works out in both ways too, because then it also gives me, if I, if I'm running out of ideas for videos and then they throw that out there, then it's like, well, there's a video I can do right there. Um, but I always wondered about that, too, if I would ever become more popular, how would I be able to handle the negative criticism that some people do doing or the, yeah. the trolls out there just trying to, you know, be dicks, man. Um, and as much as I would say, I would try not to let it affect me. Um, I should not think what other people, you know, think of me besides my friends. It, it will get to me and I'll just have to figure out the best way to work through it. Yeah, well, I think one um, strategy that is simple, but I think I've seen people do this is like, say you have a video, right? And it has like 
50 likes and 5 dislikes, I think some people look at it as, oh, 5 out of 50 people hated this versus 50 people liked it and 5 disliked it. Like, I think a lot of people think of the dislike out of the like ratio versus, no, the whole like ratio is there versus a small amount of people. Like, yeah. I think it's just like a mindset. Well, and, that, and that's kind of the one I, I used to think that too. Um, and it is kind of the mindset with it. Where it's like, well, 10% are, you know, 10% of the people that watched it didn't like it. But then you don't add in the whole statistics with uh, the views too. Because I mean, I, I try to thumbs up, you know, a lot of the videos I watch, but there is a yeah. lot of my friends that watch my videos that, you know, it, it not, they might not intentionally do that, but they might forget to, you know, click thumbs up. So you, you could have, yeah, I get that. Like you can have those 50 likes, those five dislikes, but you could have 500 people that actually watch the video. So, I mean, yeah, it's like anything, like even when you're reviewing an item or something like that, what do you go to when you look at it first? You know, you just look at the reviews for it. Well, if you got one guy, you know, that has a dislike on there, and then no positive ones. It's that's sometimes a good thing. I've I've gone to a hotel room one time where you know we wanted to leave a negative review about it. And normally I don't review anything. So right. I was like, if you see all these negative reviews, and it's of course somebody's if they didn't like something, they're gonna say something bad. But I don't know, man. It's just yeah. Try well, I think- well, most people, I think, they watch a YouTube video and then they don't like, dislike, or anything. They might like it, but then they watch yeah. it and keep going. Right. That's well, sometimes, definitely... too, uh, like I talked to the the one day about your Slimecast, uh, their second episode was, uh, they might be laying down at night watching YouTube to go yeah. to bed or whatever, and they might watch it. And if I'm watching it on my TV, I can't comment on my TV. So right. if I want to comment and I want to like it, I have to pull my phone out. I have to open up the app and I have to do all that stuff on it. So it could just be, I mean, your buddies could be watching it. but And, and I've had that too, where uh, local people, coworkers, they watch my videos. They don't comment on it. They wait until yeah, they yeah. see me the next day at work and then they talk to me about it. Yeah, like, I'll have a friend who's, like, he's watching all the videos, but he never likes or comments or anything, but, yeah. like, I know there's people watching, you know, and I know, like, right. uh, for me, it's, like, for videos, there's certain videos I want to exist, and even if I'm the only one who likes it, it exists, and that's, like, yeah. the big thing for me, and you just, you never know which video is going to take off. Yeah, and you never know which video is going to inspire somebody or, yeah. you know, yeah. anything like that, too. It definitely like i remember my uh like my uh, nostalgia video you know that was more of a passing project but the one guy in the comment section you know he seemed to really like it mm-hmm. a bit like a like I had an emotional reaction to it and that was nice like right that's yeah, kind of like when i just did the video about you know why and how i started collecting you know and that's it came it went from being you know informative or something like that and it yeah it's pure motion pure uh passion and stuff like that and that's you know and you know we talk i talk a lot about nostalgia in there too um bringing me back to a simpler time before bills and mortgages and working 50 hours a week and stuff like that remind me yeah. of just being a kid and sitting down and playing a game yeah it's like yeah those simple times you know yeah. definitely I know one thing for me, what I'm trying to do with YouTube now is I want to start covering also like, you know, modern day games. Because one thing I worry is that like I'll get too boxed into just retro stuff. And then like if I if I don't make any modern videos for like a year and I get boxed in kind of, then the audience might not be expecting it. So now I'm trying to like focus on a mix of, you know, modern and retro, try to fill that middle void. Yeah. That is very true, and, uh, you know, I never thought about that when I came up with the name originally was uh, I do play some modern stuff, and um, I, I kind of lean more talking about, you know, retro stuff, and it is kind of hard to distinguish sometimes what exactly is considered retro. Somebody tried to tell me anything from, like, three generations be- prior to what's come out, so, like, you know, OG Xbox, GameCube, PS2 or considered retro now or something like that and that's uh and we were talking about kamikaze kun earlier he was talking about that with his he does a wednesday night arcade stream 
and he said that he kind of wishes uh he mentioned something about he wished that he wouldn't have just dedicated it to just arcade games yeah. um and and it is something that you don't want to what is that pigeonhole yourself to something um but you know once again once again it is your channel you do what you want and if the other people don't like it you know that's it's like I talked about before, Spruce G H. So he sent me, you know, when I won that Nintendo Mini, and he sent me a nice little bet, uh, letter that I have somewhere. You know, he said, "Keep doing the, keep doing YouTube till it's not fun anymore. If it's not fun, then stop doing it." Yeah, and I think that's definitely uh, because the people who like they stop liking it, but they keep pushing for like, you know, I'm gonna keep um, uploading every week. Then they get burnt out for good. Whereas if you take a break, and- then come back. And I think you can kind of tell that sometimes with like uh, uh, ABGN and stuff like that. Some of these videos that he puts out seem kind of forced and not as good as his older ones. Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm and I'm proud of him because you know he he has been he was more of a he's more into I think films than he is actually video games. I mean, granted he still likes video games, but I think he's doing what he actually likes now and doing all these uh, film reviews and stuff like that and yeah so i think i think he's finally getting he he was very held on to you know being known as the angry video game nerd when really you know he's wanting to do other stuff so he's venturing out and i think that's kind of why they started the company cinemassacre and did yeah. stuff like that too so they weren't just you know he didn't just start a channel called angry video game nerd and being stuck doing that all the time because yeah, you know I I like so he is the exact opposite of his character you know james yeah, seems like yeah very down to earth, very nice guy. And that's what everybody else talks about. I mean, he's about the exact opposite of his character. Yeah. I'm a big fan of James too. Like I, I like a lot of his, uh, non AVGN videos. Like, um, you know, what's interesting. One of, um, cause he has like a video that's like, you know, his 10 favorite videos he's made. And one of them was interesting. It was like, uh, when he was a kid at like a poke, there was like a, a statue of a dragon. And then that stuck with him and it scaled him as a kid. So, like, in his 20s, he ventured back to see if that statue was still there. And he showed up, like, literally one hour before they were going to remove it. Oh, so it wow. Just like, yeah. So, it was just like... Sounds, that's like, like me. sounds like yeah. me with E.T., yeah. man. Yeah. When I was a kid, E.T. scared the hell out of me. And it wasn't until my 20s before I finally got up <laughs> the courage to actually watch the whole movie. It he looks a couple scary. Of, yeah, it took a couple of beers, but I was like, the whole time I was watching... <laughs> I was like, why was I scared of this as a kid? Yeah. And there's like, that one that one bad moment and I was I we were my mom was trying to my mom loved the movie and she was trying to yeah. show it to me. And the part where he pops up out of the cornfield and he's going <laughs> you know like that. And that, was, <laughs> that was the part I saw and that was the part that stuck with me. Yeah, well, it's like if you were out in a field and you saw that, like even now as a growing man, that'd be terrifying. God, dude. I yeah. think it'd be worse as a grown man. Yeah. <laughs> probably punch it or something i don't know <laughs> well like if you're like if you were this like like if your kid was at school or something and they had like a bunch of stuffed animals and you just saw one move and it was yeah. et that'd be like a uh, whole i'm locking the door and calling the police like <laughs> yeah i don't i and that's funny watching you know they talk about that because i've thought about that with movies sometimes it's like it's fine watching it as a movie but when you would actually sit down and realistically think yeah. about this how does these people, even as a kid, if that if that kid saw that alien, he would not try to befriend it. He'd probably yeah, just take yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be terrifying. Uh, the feds would be there in no time, and that thing would be gone. <laughs> yeah, he's right in here, guys. Come get him. Yeah, come get him. It's freaking me out talking about the phone and stuff like that. Oh, it's like Alf. Remember Alf the alien? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, jeez, like that's just... Not not fun reality to deal with. Right. If I was like out in the woods and I saw that, I'd, I'd just like run. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how if I would ever deal with alien interaction, it'd be, it'd be, a, it'd take a lot. Even you know, it'd be a lot to soak in. <laughs> yeah, that'd be like, uh, well, definitely terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> we've not now now we're on the alien topic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well 
about getting to an hour and a half. I don't want to keep yeah. you all night. I'm sure you got no, stuff to work it. on. But uh, this has been nice. You know, we've never actually talked in a real conversation before. Right. So been, so yeah, this, text. this is really my first doing anything like this. Um, I'm going to talk about it later on in my pickup video. But uh, the guy that does those uh, the dust covers. So he actually runs a podcast, um, the video game Dust Sleeves, and I might be on that sooner or later because any of the new guys I get, he starts printing for, he uh, does a little podcast and he introduces them and stuff like that. So nice. I might do something like that. And yeah, this is really fun. Uh, hopefully one of these days I can get on that and do the slime cast with you and uh, install it to 64 or something. Yeah, definitely. I will definitely have you on. I want to do this because um, I, I shot you that message about doing this a long time ago. Yeah. I was like, I was trying, you know, it, it just seems fun to be, able, yeah. you know, discuss retro games and stuff. Because I'm sure, like, you can relate. There's not too many people in your real life who you can, like, talk to about YouTube and game collecting and all that. No. Uh, I have one buddy who's a co-worker that he's a big Twitch streamer. Yeah. And he relates to a lot of the stuff, but he just the video side of it. But otherwise, um, retro wise, he's not too into it. He plays, he, he's big into Dead by Daylight and the new Call of Duty and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's not, I can't really talk to you know somebody about the Odyssey 2 or anything like right. that. They, 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 you know, all they think of is like Nintendo 64 or something like that. Granted, which is better than nothing, but yeah. I know. I'm like uh, I'm like that too. It's like I have all this knowledge of like the second gen consoles. It's like I, <laughs> buddy, I if you called me up one day and you're like, want to do a three hour podcast about the Odyssey too? I'm like, I'm down. We'll try. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if I can do it that long. I can, I yeah. can maybe talk. We could probably easily talk for another hour and a half about games and stuff like that. But I don't know if I can strictly talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if I can. May get one hour. Like I'd have to talk about all the second gen consoles. We'd probably we'd probably get off track very fast. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Be talking about the uh, fail child channel F and the FM Towns Moldy and all these uh, weird side consoles, all the Pong right. ones. Yeah, definitely. This has been fun though. Uh, definitely have to do this again at some point. And uh, let me know when you're on that podcast too. I just uh, I definitely want to check it out. You yeah, know, cool, man. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be doing my pick. I think I'll actually when I get off here with you, I'll be working on editing my gaming pickups video and I actually talk a lot about these because I got these last month. Um, nice. And yeah, I'll I'll give a link to that podcast in the description in there too, so you guys can check it out too. The dust covers they look great too. Oh, they is. You know what? Especially this gaming off the grid one, like the purple really pops and everything. Yeah. And all that see right there but it really pops off and it looks awesome and i still got mine sealed and he did a very great job doing my little logo on there and then he asked about the yeah. back what i wanted on the back and he's got oh, that's the, awesome i yeah, didn't see the back. instagram and youtube thing and it's got my name on there so Definitely. yeah pretty soon i got i don't know if you have him on instagram retro liquor he's working on it some an actual channel art for my page for me, so that'll be really cool too. So nice. Oh, I like the avatar you have now too. Yeah, he made he made that a retro looker. Him and his wife do uh, graphic design and stuff like that. And he's like, "Well, what do you want?" I said, "I don't know. Do some." And that's the cool thing about him is he he knows almost exactly what I want without yeah. me knowing what I want. So he showed me the eight bit. I said, "I just want a couple logos and then uh uh." Kind of the similar design like this, but I wanted to look like it was on a Nintendo cartridge or something. And he said, "Said no, say no more." And he, said, he asked for any fine anything I was strictly want on there, and I was like, "I don't know, man." And then he's yeah, like, "All right, right. So this is what this is what I got so far." And he sent me a picture of it, and my jaw just dropped because I was like, "Holy crap, dude, this yeah. is amazing!" Like, very nice. It looks great, definitely. Like, uh. Because it, it's got that whole 8-bit style, but it also, yeah. it's just like the most fitting avatar. Right. I know, especially when you had like me in the little red sweatshirt with the little zapper gun that made me laugh. Yeah. No, it's like it's like a nice touch, definitely. That, I think you're going to like what I'm going to be sending you in the mail. 
It's uh, one. It, it's the only one to exist on the planet. Oh, God. That, and it can, yeah, be used, it can be used for your YouTube channel. And it's not a game. <laughs> no, unre- good, unrelated. I was also going to send you some soda. Like uh, some special types of soda we got. You drink oh, soda, yeah. right? Do you drink soda? Uh, I do occasionally, yep. Okay, I'm going to send you some glass-bottled soda that's uh, made from Washington. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. Definitely. Yeah. And I don't know if you got that Ms. Craft, Ms. Croft or whatever. She uh, she said the one time, too, that she was going to send me some hot sauces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I like, saw that. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I, I, won't, I won't send you spicy. any hot sauce, don't worry. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be known as the Iowa Spicy Gamer Dad. Yeah, if you get big enough, they can get you on hot ones. There you we know? go. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm waiting I'd for have, that one. I'd have, to get, I'd have to get really big for that because <laughs> LA, LA Beast has 2.5 million subscribers and he tried to get a petition to get on there and he still yeah. hasn't got on there. Well, one sub at a time. Right, there you go. Well, this has been nice, you know. I I think your channel is really good. I consider you. you like um, because eventually I want to make a video on like either top ten retro gaming YouTubers or just retro gaming YouTubers in general and like their impact on the community. And right. uh, I definitely want to include you in that because the, the well the way I describe your channel, it's like the production value isn't obviously on like Metal Jesus level where he's got like expensive cameras and all this equipment. But, like, your channel is, like, the most humble, wholesome channel. It's representative of what makes retro gaming great in the community. It's a nice guy, living nostalgia, humble, not egotistical, you know, involved in the community. Like, I really think your channel is, like, I'd put it in the top ten retro gaming YouTubers. Well, definitely. thank you. Yeah. I, no I, I just do, you know, like you said, I'm, I'm very passionate about it. I have fun doing it, and... Yeah, I just I enjoy being in this community, and you know it. Not to sound cliche, but it, it you know to be something I feel oh, hang like on, it I froze know. again. It froze. All right, oh, yeah, back. All right, it just like I said, not town too cliche, but it it feels like I finally am where I belong, and yeah, I love it. Nice, definitely, and I'm excited to see. Uh... You know where our channel goes in the coming months for sure. Yeah. You're, almost, gonna, you're gonna hit 400. Yeah, it's gone almost up a, quick. I think I'm three or four away from 350 right now. So you're just at 300 not long ago. Yeah, it's it's kind it kind of goes in waves. Every once in a while, I'll be like, well, I haven't got any subscribers in two weeks, and all of a sudden it's like, boop, there's 15. Yeah, you get that one video that'll bring in like the new set. Yep. Hey, I mean, you've got a loyal, uh, you know, fan base too. You know, the people always commenting, yeah. watching, definitely. And yeah. whenever I see your videos, you conveniently upload at a good time for me, which usually like at seven a.m. ish, and I get home from work, and it's like sweet, I can sit down, eat this pot pie, drink this soda, and watch Iowa's new video. Right, and, and that's uh, that's what I love about some of the videos. Like uh, I was talking about Good Mythical Morning, and that's what I really like about theirs is they yeah. do right in the morning. So if I get off and I'm sitting here and sitting down here having a pop tart or something, or you know getting <laughs> yeah. ready to go to, getting ready to go to bed for the the next night shift, and I can just watch them and fall asleep to it. And I try to have a scheduling for releasing my videos, and I just it's just so random sometimes. I don't yeah. It's like I even researched one time what is the best time to release a video, and I there's so many different options, and it was just kind of like some days I'm just like every two days I'll release one, or you know trying to find the perfect time to do it, and it's just very random. I just try to get mine out before like 3 p.m., like in between like 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. I figure it's like prime right. time. But, like, I never know what days I have off during the week, so I can't, like, make a, a weekly schedule, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm going to work on it every Wednesday because I just don't yep. know. And that's the new thing I'm starting to do is just trying to do a Super Sega Sunday or something. And yeah. the, way I'm, the only way I'm going to be able to get the way with doing that is if I record, you know, do it for you ahead of time and just schedule it and release it that day. Yeah. I have every other weekend off, so, of course, I can't, you know, do it every Sunday. So I got to think in advance. All right, definitely got it. You seem pretty busy too, so I know for you, you 
probably a bit of a struggle to figure out how to plan around it, you know? Yeah. I sit here, I'll think, and I'll write down ideas for videos, and hopefully when I get a free moment, I'll record as many as I can and then edit yeah, them later. That's the way to do it, definitely. Yeah. Well, Iowa, I would tell people to check you out, but I think everybody watching this probably knows who you are. <laughs> but if you have not, oh, check out uh, Iowa, definitely. Yeah. Uh, there's, one, there's actually one quick question I wanted to ask, real quick. If you ever move from Iowa... Are you changing the name? <laughs> I'm probably not. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I I did grow up for a little part of my life in Nebraska, and I am still, you know, college football wise, I'm still a Nebraska yeah. Husker fan. So I don't, you know, if it comes down to it, I'm always going to be an Iowa boy because I grew up, you know, been living here twenty plus years. So I'll always be an Iowa boy no matter what. So I'd probably right. keep the same. I I was wondering that. Yeah. Nice. Hey, in 15 years, maybe I'll be Washington State Retro Game with that. There you go, Dad. Yeah, there you go, man. Oh, yeah. We'll have to do this again sometime, definitely. Yep. Sounds great, man. Uh, you have a good night. Yep, you too. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Anytime. All right. See you later, it's been man. fun. Yeah. Yep. Stay retro. You too.